Hello and thanks for joining us on this edition of Green and Gold Gridiron. I'm Brian Graff alongside Keith Roardink, a writer for PackerReport.com. And Packers fans could not be more excited about the result of the Thursday night game that will go down as the miracle in Motown. The Packers on a Hail Mary. In all your years of watching the Packers, I remember some spectacular finishes. Yes. The Antonio Freeman catch on Monday night. The Walter Stanley kick return oh, for a touchdown yeah. on Thanksgiving. Some of those back How when, about the when wins were against Chicago the just a couple years ago. That uh, the overtime win at Denver. So many exciting finishes yeah. to games, yes. but that one, that's up there. That it, it's crazy. It it was unexpected. I mean, when they're down twenty to nothing, you're just the mm -hmm. the you know the the sky is falling. That's it. If they lose that game, it's over. It's yes. over, and it looked like it was over, and they come back. It's a great lesson. I, I DVR'd the game. I didn't tell my sons. We got up. We watched it the <laughs> next morning. I love seeing their reaction. They, Dad, why are you having us watch this? They, you know, they went to bed. It was 20 to nothing. But what an amazing game for Rodgers, not just to, I mean, to, to lean back at the angle he did and throw that, and for, for Richard Rodgers, too. He's mm -hmm. got us back to the play. He goes there and just, mm -hmm. just those big, soft, pillowy hands to pull that down. But, you know, I, again, as great as that play was, where do they go next? Because we were all excited when they beat mm -hmm. Minnesota, and right. look at what happened in Chicago. For this game to really mean something and for that play to really live beyond just one great play, it has to mean something because, again, this team was down 20 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there were, there were big to, problems before that comeback. To that Detroit team. They get through the stretch of playing NFC North teams. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to play the Cowboys, which – are still in the hunt in the NFC East wow. thanks to their Amazing. win on Monday Night yeah, Football. Amazingly. So that's a whole different conversation. But they're now through those division games until they play the Vikings, and stretch. it could still come down to that final game. Very much so. But the Vikings get throttled by the Seahawks. So as you yeah, look at this, I, I, we're looking at a spark for the Packers perhaps, mm -hmm. and we needed to see Minnesota lose a game. So where do you see them going from here on out? I mean, everything's working out, but, but again, as, as we keep saying, it – you know, that win, that comeback, it can't be a fluke. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Minnesota right. game can't be a fluke. They have to decide that's their identity. They're the team that wins at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. They're the team that comes back from 20, 20 points down. Mm -hmm. But they have right. to do it. They have to run the ball. They have to keep playing defense. I still feel like as great a game as Richard Rodgers has, they need to find a way to get the ball to the perimeter. They need to push the ball down the field. You know, they've got some tough games ahead. Dallas, mm -hmm. of course, you know, without Tony Romo, they're still hanging around. They're still, uh, you know, they mm -hmm. they don't know they're out of it yet. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to keep playing. They've got tough games at Arizona. But, you know, it, it starts this week at home in Dallas. And they, they've got to they've got to make it happen. And, you know, we're going to we're going to talk to Aaron Ripkowski about how you how you take some of that momentum. And, you know, how do you how do you extend the shelf life of that big play into another week? Side note from this game, Eddie Lacy and Alonzo Harris miss curfew. Harris gets cut. John Crockett yeah, gets don't, promoted. Don't miss curfew. In the connection. So you mentioned Aaron Ripkowski is on our show. He was a late scratch because yes. he was ill. Crockett gets elevated to active status. He provided a spark that oh, hadn't yeah. been seen. What did oh, you like yeah. out of it? I mean, so look at the numbers. Carries the ball five times for 22 yards. Uh, breakaway run at 12 yards. So oh, yeah. what's that? But there was more to it. He looked, he looked hungry. I mean, mm -hmm. this, was a this was a team that needed something, and they bring in this guy, and this wasn't just a fluke of, hey, let's elevate this kid and drop him in the game. He earned that. This mm -hmm. is a kid who, who gets complimented for just busting his butt in practice. I mean, doing everything right, maybe in contrary to some of the things that were going on possibly with Harris, mm -hmm. maybe some things that we don't know about with Eddie Lacy, but here's yeah. a kid that got rewarded for working hard in practice, and he came in, and, man, he had energy. He had an enthusiasm mm -hmm. that 12-yard run could have been a five or six-yard mm -hmm. run he wasn't going down and I mean he comes back and he's slapping Aaron Rodgers so <laughs> you know what a what a great spark to see right when they needed it the other interesting thing is that Monte Ball worked out for the Packers yeah. they also brought in some <laughs> receivers they they did and I mean feel free to read everything into that mm -hmm. I mean they're again they're they're struggling to get the ball on the outside and, and mm -hmm. James Starks is having a career year but you know we still don't know what's wrong with Eddie Lacy he, right. he doesn't look like Eddie Lacy. They bring guys in all the time 
Mm -hmm. But I think those two position groups, when they're struggling, mm -hmm. it's going to be a point of interest. Right. So we're going to bring someone of our own in. The G3 team Who also is a point includes of interest. Jenny Ritchie. I'm always a point of interest. And Jenny will be with us for the Title Town Topics with Aaron Ripkowski. And we want to do the interview in a little bit different way because yes. Aaron has been a popular guy. So what kind of things are we going to try to dig into? We are just going to have quite the variety show today. Uh, so we're going to talk about, you know, his take on the Sooner Clemson game. You know, he's an Oklahoma kid. We're going to talk about his beard because we can't not talk about his beard. No, I feel bad for Shay. Yes. I'm jealous. Well, I don't, so okay. Um, we're going to get to know him a little bit more off the field. So it's going to be a lot more personal questions. I'm sure he's sick of hearing about <laughs> everything else. So we're just going to get his opinion. You know, we're just going to have a chat with him. We plan to have a lot of fun with Aaron Ripkowski. He is our guest. That's after this timeout. Brought to you in part by Hermaning Financial Group. Hermaning Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids, proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. Do you like to walk? Do you want to live longer? You will love square dancing. Friends you meet, you meet for life. Marvelous people. I guess I meet people. I love it. Love it. I love square dancing. The fun, the family. Great variety of music. The camaraderie. you young. It's fun. Try it, you like it. Call 715-544-7969. Visit WisconsinSquareDancing.com for more information. First lesson free, singles and couples welcome. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold, we take care of them all. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthStarCleaning.net Welcome back to Green and Gold Gridiron. I'm Brian Graff alongside Keith Rorink, and it's time for us to introduce our special guest in this episode. He is a first-year fullback out of the University of Oklahoma, drafted by the Packers in the sixth round. It's our pleasure to introduce Aaron Ripkowski. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing, Aaron? Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Now, Aaron, you've been a popular guy over the last week or two. I, I know when people go to ESPN, they make the rounds. They hit Mike and Mike in the morning. They do the shows throughout the, the rest of the day and then in the evening. So you seem to be that media-friendly guy recently. How are you enjoying the communications part of it? I know you studied it in college. Yeah, I studied it, and I just like to get some experience wherever I can. So uh, getting on a couple shows here and there and getting comfortable with it, it's a lot of fun. Now, of course, like every other show, we have a list of questions for you. So I'm curious, what have you been asked about most in the last uh, few days? Um, let's see. Uh, I always get asked about, you know, the last few days or last couple shows, I got asked about how when I carried the ball, how everyone chanted coon. Yes. And uh, they thought that was pretty funny about how <laughs> even though it's not coon, they assumed another fullback in there catches the ball. And they always ask me the question whether they, they think that'll pass or what my nickname should be or what my chance should be. That's what I get asked the most about. <clears throat> I'm, I'm guessing second most is is the beard, which which we could probably book for its own show. <laughs> <laughs> right, naturally. I mean, it's kind of a buffer. I'm from southeast Texas, and I'm not used to the cold weather, so <laughs> I grew it out as a buffer. So we had those in our notes as well, so I guess we have to ask those things in a different way. But let's start with this. So you understand, I think you've learned pretty quickly how much of a fan favorite John Kuhn is. Yeah, I mean, he's, the fans love gritty guys, and he's one of the best. He's a, he's a gritty guy. He knows the game very well, and uh, he's got a lot of knowledge to, uh, to absorb from him. So I'm glad to have the opportunity to work with a guy of his class, his nature, and his knowledge. I can uh, only hope to absorb as much as I can from him. Now, you know, you went to a big-time program at Oklahoma, and we'll ask you about that later. But, you know, you're, you're not unlike John in the way that, you know, a little bit of an unheralded guy, you weren't even sure if you'd get drafted. And here you are thrust into this role. And, again, you know, Packer fans, they, they love that gritty. You're, there, there's no glamour. There's no glory. When you're in there, man, you're, you're just laying wood on somebody. I mean, you, you take pride in that, that that's, that's what people are cheering. You putting a big lick on someone. 
Yeah, I'd say a lot of us fullbacks take pride in that. You know, it's it's some guys. That's the way they like to play the game. They don't play for the cheers and the rec uh, the recognition, the glory, this and that. They play because they love to fly around and make plays and hit people. Yeah. And a prime example of that is when your running back back at Oklahoma set a rushing record. Really, they're talking about your teammate, but you're helping to pave the way. Right. There's a lot of other guys that go into that as well, as well as the coaching, the offensive line, stuff of that nature. You know that. That guy deserves it all. Samaj P. Ryan, he's one of the most humble guys I've ever met in my entire life. That guy's a workhorse, and it's awesome to see him run. It really is. Now, you weren't always a fullback. You were a linebacker in high school. You made that, that switch when you got to Oklahoma. I guess what's the, what's the mentality of a guy who, man, your, your job is to just, just be a, a meat plow and clear those big guys out of the way? Yeah, and instead of plugging gaps, you know, it's opening up holes. It's, it's a lot of the same downhill nature that uh, – linebacker has but instead of filling that gap it's you have to focus more on pushing guys out and making sure the running back has seam so he can score touchdowns mm -hmm. when you when you get that big decleating hit i mean i mean how, do, how does that compare to you know that rare carry or you know if you do get a touchdown you know i'll be honest i like the decletion a little more it's, yeah. it's a lot more fun for me but uh you know scoring touchdowns is fun as well but uh only when the opportunity arises. It's not always the go-to call, but when it comes up, it, those are fun as well. I think you ended up in the perfect place because the Packers use their fullback, and uh, other places they don't because of the spread offenses. Did you ever think at some point as you were preparing to be drafted or to end up with an NFL team that maybe you'd have to switch to another position? Uh, no, I, d I didn't really think of that. I thought maybe I could play some inline blocking tight end stuff of that nature because I played a lot of that in college, but... Uh, you know, I, I looked around at all the different teams and what teams were using fullbacks that, that, that have the same playing style as me, and I figured I might have to drop a little weight or gain a little weight to play different positions and uh, fit a certain role and niche. But I think Green Bay is the, the perfect spot for me and my playing nature. When you were doing the research, how many teams did you find? You know, there, weren't, there wasn't too many. There was maybe 12, 12 to 15 teams that used fullbacks, and not all of those guys are tra traditional fullbacks like John and I. And you also had to put on some weight rather quickly, but it didn't affect your speed. So how did you go about that? The approach, uh, getting into the NFL, understanding what's best for your body, and also understanding the playbook. Right. Well, uh, the deal was I played in college about the same weight I'm playing now, maybe a little lighter. But when I went to my pro day and all the training that I did before that, it was all speed, speed, speed. So what I did was cut a little weight. I think I... I weighed in on my pro day at 238 or something of that, and that's the lightest I've been since high school. So all I had to do was get back to lifting weights and eating a little more to make sure that I put that weight back on for playing season. We had Jeff Janis on the show earlier this year, and he's another one who's proving his medal on special teams as well. When you come in, uh, he obviously uh, a little bit different age, but when you come in as part of a new draft class and, and you have that group of special teams players, what's that like as you come together, the camaraderie there, uh, the time spent as each of you also has your own individual positions that you're learning. I mean, it's it's phenomenal to see a bunch of guys get thrown in here and kind of come together and start feeding off of each other, the energy, the the way we take coaching, and everyone's learning from each other. It's not that every man's for himself. Everyone kind of feeds off of each other and absorbs knowledge wherever they can. And I think that's what makes it makes the Green Bay Packer culture so unique because everyone's helping each other out. It's not an eye for an eye or get yours and that's it it's everyone's trying to help everybody in the right direction so that we make, we get wins mm -hmm. and you you talk about the green bay culture uh we've we've seen what you've done on the field what's what's off the field been like i mean you're a texas boy you were at oklahoma now you're up on the frozen tundra you you've, you've got off pretty easy so far it's been pretty mild out weather wise <laughs> but uh you you getting ready for uh for that 20 degree below zero yeah, I'm trying to settle in. I don't know how I'm going to adapt to it yet, but I got enough Scandinavian blood in me. I should be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I think the Viking part is going to be a question that Jenny's yeah. going to ask you after the break. Of course, that's on the list. So as we go back to the beginning of our interview and the things you've been asked about, of course, the big question, the Hail Mary, you were not active because of an illness, but tell us your view of that play and the reaction and being a part of that scene. You know, for starters, I've never been on the winning side of anything like that. And then second, I have never seen anything like that. So it was just, it was awesome to see the way everybody's face lit up. And, you know, nobody knew it was going to happen. That's not something that you can script. You can work on that play a hundred times and, you know, might get it right at one time. But we showed up and they made sure it happened on the time when it counted. You know, as, as great as that play was, what, 
what do, what do you learn about yourselves as a team? I mean, from, from a guy like Aaron that's been there to, to you as a rookie, what, what do you learn about yourselves? Because when you're down 20 to nothing, I mean, it, you know, watching that game, it feels like this, not just the game is slipping away, but maybe the season. When you fight back and you end up on the, on the winning side of that, what, what do you take away from that? What carries over? You know, for one, people always talk about not giving up, and football is a game if anything can happen, and you never really truly believe it. You always push for that, but you never truly believe it until you see it. And we were down the entire game. We didn't lead for one second of that game, and it all came down to the last play, and that's really what you learn. You come together as a team and say, hey, we got this. You got to come together. You got to fight. You never know what's going to happen. Never give up, and we just happen to come out on top. It's, it's so hard to – take momentum and, and carry it over from one week and one game to the next. But, I mean, coming back that way, is, is that something you guys can hang on to and, and build on? And if you get in a situation where things aren't going right, kind of kind of recall that and say, hey, we, we've been in worse. Yeah, I, I don't think you so much as reflect on the play or that game. It's just more of like an energy that carries over. you got to approach every week the same way. And uh, you can't look back and say, this is what we've done or this is what we did. It's all about taking the next step the next day and what play can we make next, this and that sort. But, uh, yeah, I'd definitely say that the energy helps with, you know, the, the carryover of the energy and the excitement will help us through the week and help us push through the last part of the season. Well, you know, we couldn't get through the whole interview without asking you about the beard. So Jenny's waiting in the wings. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll have our title town topics. Our guest this week is fullback Aaron Ripkowski. Stay tuned, everyone. Looking for a high-impact way for your business to stand out from the rest? Flipside Graphics specializes in vehicle wraps, vinyl graphics, and much more. Cutting edge graphics with professional results is what we stand for. Have a large fleet that needs to be flipped or shirts to be embroidered? Our design team will handle every aspect of the project from start to finish. We design it, we wrap it, we flip it. Call Flipside Graphics today and stand out from the competition. Things break all the time and glue never works. What you need is Laser Bond USA, the amazing liquid plastic that fixes virtually anything in as little as three seconds. Laser Bond is not a glue, but a unique liquid plastic that only hardens with the UV light. Now fill in plumbing leaks in three seconds or less. Instantly repair kids' toys and keep playtime flying. The magic? A powerful liquid plastic that hardens under ultraviolet light. The best part? The adhesive is made in the USA. Wow, that is fast. It bends, it's flexible. If you mess up applying, just wipe clean. No sticky residue. Call now to get LaserBond USA for just $19.99 and receive this protective carry case free. But wait, we're going to double the offer absolutely free and ship your order free. Call now. Call 1-800-504-3045 to get your LaserBond USA. Call now or go to LaserBondUSA.com. So call 1-800-504-3045. Call now. Welcome back to Green and Gold Gridiron. Our guest, Packers fullback Aaron Ripkowski, and we welcome in Jenny Ritchie for our Title Town Topics. Jenny, take it away. Okay, so every, as we've mentioned, you know, you've been on a lot of shows and interviews and things like that in the past week or so, so we don't want to do anything that someone else has done. So can you tell me what you've already talked about so I can mark it off my list? <laughs> <laughs> well, for one, we've always, I've been asked on every show about my beard. What's the reasoning? What's the motivation? We do have and that. Yeah. Good, Twitter, good Twitter is a huge fan of your beard. Twitter <laughs> loves your beard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just throw some questions at me in different form, and maybe I'll get something new. <laughs> Be creative. Go ahead. So why did you decide to grow your beard? This is a good question because I, I feel like that's a commitment. Like, you can't just decide one day, like, I'm going to grow a Viking beard. <laughs> you know, it's actually a, a lack of commitment. It's more of just being lazy, just kind of let it grow for a while. And uh, after it got long, I kind of liked the way it looked, and somebody told me how to grow it out for the entire season. So it was... It was almost a dare, but not really. Nobody really dared me. It's just uh, see what it does and grow it out the whole season. So I stuck with it. Is there is there a limit? I mean, is it is it going to get cut eventually? Um, are, are you are we are we going to have you on the show next year? It's going to be it's going to be I down your way. Man, I don't have the five year plan set up for the. Beard. It's just uh, whatever happens happens. I'm going to cut it. Maybe maybe cut it at the end of the right. season. Nice. And, and like you start said, start going it out again. But we'll see. It'll help you in the cold. I mean, it can't yeah. hurt, right? It's a huge buffer. <laughs> All right, so your, your Oklahoma Sooners, you know, they've reached the final college playoffs. They're excited. They're, they're going to play the top-seeded Clemson. So what's your game prep? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I'm going to watch. It's going to be a close game, but I think the guys have some motivation because we lost to them in a bowl game the year before, and that always uh, helps to have that little 
you know, you, you have that loss in the back of your head, like, wow, they really, they handed it to us last year. So we got to get straight and make sure, you know, with the national championship on the line that we, we make things happen in the right direction or they do. I'm just a fan now. So there's something, that. <laughs> and there's something about Oklahoma and the orange bowl 19th appearance. Yeah. That's, that's quite the amazing run for the Sooners. Yeah, they, uh, that's a bowl game that we've, yeah, 19 times. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. We're here to educate. Yeah. <laughs> Going all the way back to the first yeah. one. <laughs> Have you had a chance to go down and see him at all this year? No, I, well, actually, I went back and watched them against, uh, who was it? Uh, Texas, was it Texas Tech they played maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched them against that game. I went back for, uh, I watched up until the second quarter, but then I left. But it was a good game, and uh, they finished out strong, and they've been, you know, fighting their tail off the rest of the season. It's they're incredible to watch. I'm trying to think. Are there any Clemson guys on the Packers right now? I'm I'm, I'm trying to think of somebody you could you could give some grief yeah. to. I'm, I'm yeah, I not can't coming up with any. any Clemson guys. I don't think there's any Clemson, but there's a few Bama uh, yeah. guys. So if they make yeah. it to the next game, got the rivalry going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you studied abroad in Ireland. We're really we creeped on your life a lot, just so you know, because we mm -hmm. wanted to get some new Fair questions enough. that people weren't going to ask. So. Yeah. So you studied abroad in Ireland in 2014, which is awesome. I'm pretty jealous. So what was that experience like? It was it was awesome. You know, I, I love traveling. I travel as much as I can. I really, with football season going on and all that stuff, I haven't had much time to travel. But I love to get outside of our world and outside of our country from time to time and see how different cultures work and how everybody, you know, reacts and for, for day to day life. And it really helps you grow to see the way other people approach their day. What did, what did you like? I, I've, I've been to Ireland many years ago. Uh, what, what did you like best about it? I, I'd say the simplicity. You know, everybody, it's not so much for materialistic things and this is what I got and this is what I got. It's more about day-to-day -day interaction with people and they, they care more about family and friends than anything. And it's their hospitality. It'll, uh, it'll, humble, it'll humble you real quick. Mm -hmm. and, and the Guinness. Yeah, exactly. It could be the Guinness. That might that be a factor. Well. Yeah. yeah, the Guinness is awesome as well. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, taking time out of your busy schedule. You are the popular man around Green Bay, so thanks for doing this. Aaron Ripkowski, Packers fullback, and our thanks to Mayfield Sports as well for helping make this happen. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Keith's Keys and the latest look at our NFL pickups. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold. We take care of them all. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours, seven days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthstarCleaning.net Harmony Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids, proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. Do you like to walk? Do you want to live longer? You will love square dancing. Friends you meet, you meet for life. Marvelous people. I guess I meet people. I love it. Love it. I love square dancing. The fun, the family. Great variety of music. The camaraderie. But you're young. It's fun. Try it, you like it. Oh, Call 715-544-7969. Visit wisconsinsquaredancing.com for more information. First lesson free, singles and couples welcome. Welcome back to our final segment of Green and Gold Gridiron. The Packers coming up next will host the Dallas Cowboys, their only home game at Lambeau Field in the month of December. And under Mike McCarthy, the Packers are very good in that month. Uh, we mentioned it before, getting outside of the NFC North. Dallas comes in. Tony Romo has been out, but they still know that they're in the hunt for the NFC East. How do you see this matchup playing out? Well, I don't think they're going to win the NFC East, but... You it's close. Know. It's you know, still you close. Can't, you can't take them for granted. Um, one of the keys, I, I think, is you can't lose track of Des Bryant. I mean, we, we all know what Des Bryant did last year in that game. We all know about the catch. He had a catch Monday night that looked very similar to that. 
right. And there, went over, some, the, and there went over the Redskins. So He wants you know, some clarification he, on that rule. <laughs> Let's take a look at our NFL pickums and the latest standings. As of uh, last week, so I pushed my lead to, uh, well, I'm at three games, so it's the same as it was well, over you Keith. You sort Jenny. of keep picking the same games that we are, so but, you can't lose ground. Yeah. But we all Perhaps have, have this that. set up ahead of time. And we want to make sure that we're not picking Thursday games like Keith likes to do. He I'm right on in all of really later. prepared, I'm right and we're like, that's a Thursday game. Sometimes you could be right on those. Uh, Jenny, a down week for you. You know, it was. After the last two, I, you were I think spot I, just, I got a little too confident. I got to just take a deep little, breath. A little, little too confident. A little, little bit. I'm still out to get you. It's fine. We're into week right 14 there. already, so we're going to move in your head right now. through <laughs> these picks. The Vikings and the Cardinals, that's a Thursday game. We're not going to pick it, uh, just so everyone knows. Full disclosure there. The Cardinals. We have the Lions <laughs> at the Rams. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Please do. Okay, I'm going to go with the Rams. Ooh, I am going to go with the Lions. I'm, I'm going to pick up a game on Brian. go with the Lions. They always, I had that underline before we even talked with, about this. <laughs> they always follow up with, so I can get a game. Uh, Redskins at the Bears. Both those teams 5-7. and seven. I'm going to go with Jay Cutler and the Bears. Yeah, glad we don't have to watch that. I'll go with the Bears <laughs> as well. I also underline the Bears, but... So what, do you, how do, what do you feel? I, what does your heart tell I, you? I, I think the Bears got it. I think You're I think not trying to get it. her to change her mind. And no, then uh, Cowboys, Packers... Are we at the point where we're going to go against them? No. No. We're no. going to go with the Packers. Remember the last okay. time you went against Packers? Just yeah, exactly. I do remember that. Yeah. It's just right in the middle of a tough <laughs> stretch. As far as our locks, I'm taking the Chiefs at home over the Chargers and the Buccaneers at home over the Saints. Of Your locks? You're, of course you're taking the Chiefs. I am also taking the Chiefs at home. I'm not taking the Chiefs. <laughs> and throw that in there. You, you have one more. It's I'm fine. taking Continue the Chiefs. On. I'm going to take Carolina. The unbeaten streak goes on. They will win almost, against Atlanta. Almost ended. And your locks, Jay? My locks, I'm taking there. the Seahawks over the Ravens, and I'm taking the 49ers over the Browns. All right. A couple of I NFC like that West game teams. Will be interesting. Yes. I like that. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode. Toes. Once again, our thanks to Packers fullback Aaron Ripkowski, as well as Mayfield Sports. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.